it's it's more like a compound over there. You guys just live within a few miles of each other. I know. Seriously, we well, all are like right near each other. It's the Centerville Mafia. <laughs> We're here. Exactly. They all wear trench coats and everything. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Woodshop 101. This is episode 150 for April 1st, 2019. I'm Drew Short of the Rockin' H Woodshop, and I'm joined today by my co-host Jeremy Crawford of Countryside Workshop and Sam Waddell of Sam Ryan Designs. And I am pleased to be emceeing the show that are featuring our guest hosts, Whitney and Ashley from Shanty to Chic. How you doing, ladies? So good. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hey, you're very welcome. We're pleased to have you on. Happy to be here. It'll be fun. So before we get started, we do want to thank our patrons, John Raminger, Sean McHenry, Carl Mose, Neil Sims, Eric Roten, Earl from Rustic Saw, and Kenneth Aponte. I probably said Aponte wrong. I'm sorry. But thank you guys for being a part of the show and keeping the lights on here. We greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> and if you guys are interested in becoming a patron of our Patreon campaign, then just head on over to patron.com slash woodshop101. All of our patrons receive an after show twice a month as a benefit. You can also support the show by purchasing some podcast swag. Just go to countrysideworkshop.com slash shop for that link. While you're at it, go leave us a five-star rating on the podcast player of your choice. It'll help us reach a greater audience by doing so. Yeah, and we'll have a whole bunch of new swag coming out pretty soon. Ooh, nice. Jeremy can model it for us. He's good at that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they, I definitely get get Jute Mode to send me all the digital files and images of it because I'm not modeling anything. <laughs> <laughs> no stories, no lives, no nothing. No. Jeez. So, uh, ladies, I, I know that we, we met you guys at WBC, which was a pleasure to do so, by the way. And uh, you guys also set in on our uh, second talk that we gave for... Uh, podcast or power of podcasting. Um, I did want to ask you real quick. What did you guys think of that talk? We thought it was great. You yeah, we learned a lot. Um, we knew very little about podcasts, so that was it. Was fun listening to you guys, seeing the dynamics between the three of you. I took a lot of notes on my phone. <laughs> did you? I did. I actually she did. actually did. She really did. I'm oh. the taker of the duo. <laughs> That's awesome. She's the thinker. <laughs> Well, I, I saw you over there on your phone, and I, I guess I was like, either she's texting or taking notes. Uh, one of the one of the yeah, two. one or the other. We made uh, the mistake of sitting in the front of the the class. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like there, Lesson there, learned. There's a good chance it was both. Okay, every time I yeah. talk to my wife, she's over there. I'm like, are, are you listening to me? I heard everything you said. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, we have, we have superpowers. I know we can multitask really well, uh-huh. better than guy. That's hey. for sure. That's true. <laughs> After after having kids, though, my, my wife used to be a good multitasker, and she's not so good anymore. <laughs> you, you can multitask, Sam? We're still waiting for our pictures from Workbench Con. You know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Didn't my mom send them to you? No. no? They're on oh. your phone. <laughs> oh, gosh. I can't even make the excuse I have kids, but technically I take care of three of them all day, every day. I and like puppy. how you pass the buck. That's what. It, did my mom not send them to you? <laughs> I know she's the note taker in our in our. Uh, uh, duo. Oh my gosh, in duo! Your clan? Seriously, in my clan, I was gonna it's, say yeah, my clan. It's not a duo. It's actually a. It's a trio. Yeah, trace. Yeah. It's it's more like a compound over there. You guys just live within a few miles of each other. I know. Seriously, we so all are like right near each other. It's the Centerville Mafia. <laughs> we're here exactly they all wear trench coats and everything <laughs> in northern virginia yeah. <laughs> so funny so um, uh, so ladies we we actually have some quick fire questions that uh the three of us have put together and i don't know if sam hadn't thrown hers i in- did did, did you oh, okay i was just gonna transition to that because guys now we're doing a new thing that each like show is one person's like show so i just saw like a lull and i was like okay i'm gonna transition real quick but then i forgot it's your show so i would have told you still the, still the thunder see, there still you it. are there you are multitasking again i i was see we're quicker, quicker. Us after but she's that. the one that always gets on a rant and we're like sam we gotta move on <laughs> sam come on i won't say girls talk too much sometimes well not all girls but i do so well right. since I sam was gonna transition 
I'll let you go with the, the first question, Sam. She stole your thunder. <laughs> I did. I'm so sorry. Okay, these are rapid questions, quick answers. Um, mine are maybe not quick answers. Okay, but I know that at Workbench, you guys talk to some other makers about yoga pants. <laughs> and I know that there's some other stuff going on on Instagram now about it. So how many people give you crap about yoga pants? I don't know. Um, it's probably, it's, it kind of hit or miss. Like I would say, and it comes in like waves, but it's, it's generally a guy and yeah. it happens, you know, we'll, we'll get them. What do you say, Ashley? Two, two times a month, maybe yeah, specifically about like yoga pants. It depends yeah. on which yoga pants we're wearing too. Sometimes they don't like certain ones we wear. <laughs> right. And they're pretty specific about projects. So like our, like some of our, like our workbench, that's one of our, like it gets seen a lot, especially by men. They really don't appreciate the wearing of yoga pants. So but they were sparkly. One of them, one yeah. of, I wore my sparkly yes. one. They're so cute too. They're I cute. Bet. Sparkly. Guys don't really realize yoga pants are so comfortable. They're like, light. They yeah. are so comfortable. I'm going to go know, Until you work woodwork <laughs> in yoga pants, you can't give anyone crap right. about it. I'm, I'm going to get right. some. We're going to try. Actually, Olympians. I mean, Olympians wear tights okay. all the time. Yeah. And yeah. I really That's think that woodworking that. is a form of athleticism it is if yeah. you build as fast as we do right out and up and down and have, on the ground and tights. like everywhere yes i, have I used to wear a lot of I'm yoga gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wear them in the shop tomorrow you yeah. need to i'm gonna do it they're super comfy i mean comfy. i'm gonna probably put shorts on over those but comparison of either wear jeans or wear yoga pants what yep. are you gonna wear you're gonna I mean, wear you don't, the, have the, uh, you don't have the pockets of jeans <laughs> But you wear in your okay. pockets. That's what you wear a belt for. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say they don't need yes. pockets. We also yeah, get just... comments about our tool belts, too, because yeah. we They're wear them. They're so cute. We have a lot of stuff in them, <laughs> but it's like little things. And we'll get comments that we have empty tool belts. And then we have important things in there. Mm-hmm. You got oh, a place to put your you cell should, phone. You should put things in there that they wouldn't even think about. Just have like yeah. a compact, that's a, mirror, what, a hairbrush. But that's what we do. Or you pull like, out a diaper our, and say. We have our lip gloss. We have our so mints. Needs, we always have like listers. Listerine strips because we film together and we don't want to have bad breath. So we always have <laughs> Listerine strips in our tool belts. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> we I we know. have them in their place for like our tool belts aren't empty. And then yeah. honestly, like mine always has a tape measure and a pencil. I mean, what else do you need? So, I know, seriously. But, everything else is hanging on the wall. I, I and also think that most quick. tool belts don't lend well to that. Like, they don't lend well to just like the the shop woodworker. You know, they always yeah, have like the yeah. yeah. They always have like the the hammer holder and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, I don't, I wear a tool belt, uh-huh. but I don't have, I don't wear the handle on there. Like, yeah. I just want the pockets. I want a place for the tape measure. So, so somebody out there really needs to like get to working on one that's made specifically yes. for woodworkers in the shop. Yes, yep. and if I we agree. were really trying to pose, we would like put all that stuff in there. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we're not we're not posing. <laughs> Ashley does have, like five thousand screws in the all different. Like there, it's like every kind of Craig screw, every kind of spac screw. That's She'll pull so out a handful, funny. and it's just a handful of screws with sawdust. So what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you need? Hang on, let me figure. Like I got it in book. here somewhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey. That's so funny. I know. I used to wear yoga pants all the time in the shop, but I'm addicted to like Lululemon. And then I got paint on one of my Lululemons, and I was like, okay, I'm not wearing them anymore. But American Eagle has jegging. So I never really would wear American Eagle pants, but they have these jegging jeans that feel like yoga pants and Madewell do, does too. And I now wear my old Madewell ones. They don't have buttons or anything, but it's oh, jean material. And it is so – That's yes. great. Are they – They're reasonable? so comfortable. Yes. Okay. And you can like move idea. and like run in them. They're amazing. Okay, that's yeah. good. Noted. Go check them out. Yeah. They're there every day. Yeah. Just took a note on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sam doesn't realize that text, down text. in the south, you need things that are cool and breathable. That's very breathable. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to see sweat. We're good. So <laughs> in any place. So. All right, Jeremy. What What is your question? Let's Let's get to yours. All right. Um, who is the better cook? Out of you two. <laughs> Ashley. No. Well, okay. Ashley cooks more often. 
I cook more often now because my kids have gotten older. Whitney had a baby, and so her schedule changed, so she doesn't cook as often anymore. But I think it was, I think, like, you cooked a lot more than I did, and you baked, and yeah. I don't like to cook. both good at following directions, but I wouldn't call either of us, like, a chef at no. all. No. We, we just love to the eat, though. <laughs> yeah, we do like to eat. We love food. I mean, that's anybody from Texas. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I, I, I grew up eating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's hope so. Well, I mean, like, beside, like, here's your vegetables, it's like, yep, let's go get a slab of steak. I was telling yeah. you, like, Fry. so literally, so when we left, when I left work, Mitch kind of went to Hawaii, and then we went to, I flew from there to, to California, and, like, the whole time I'm texting my wife, I'm like, dude, th- the guys I'm with are, like, eating all this bougie food, like, out in the, it, out in the hills of San Fran, I'm like, I just... This Texas boy just needs a slab of steak. Like, give me a big old piece of meat. I don't want to go eat this like thing with like a little bit of fish in it and everything else. Like, I don't want no bougie food. Let's go get some good like potatoes and some steak. steak. Yep, you're in good company because we say every time we go somewhere, we find a Chili's. Yeah, and (laughs) we'll be in Chicago and we're like, I gotta find a, I gotta find a Chili's. (laughs) <laughs> they're like, we just don't say it out loud. We've learned not to voice our opinion about it. So we like just like, have a special look. We'll find yeah. chilies after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we know where we're going. Yeah. I will say that whenever I was at WorkbenchCon, I really missed Freddy's frozen custard and steak burgers. Mm-hmm. Those those are really good. I've never had their burgers, but their custard is it's very good. We actually just got those here like like two years ago or two years ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't have those. Yeah, Amanda. Amanda from Rustic. What is it? Rustic Home. Is that is that her handle? I think it is. Mm, yeah. She maybe. she lives out yeah. in California, and she said that she's she's not even aware of, of Freddy's. And I actually found one within like a thirty minute distance from her house. She's like, Oh my god, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she goes. Now yeah, I, I gotta have ask to her. Look, it look, I just want to get within thirty minutes of a Whataburger, not <laughs> six go. hours. There you go. You sound like my kids. My kids and my husband love Whataburger. I don't get it. I don't either. I don't like oh, them. I do like their taquitos, though. They yeah. see their breakfast taquitos are awesome. As a college kid. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys like have torchies? Like getting yeah. a hamburger at Taco torchies. Bell. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Torchies that is tacos. my favorite. Our I nail place is right day. next to Torchies Tacos, and whenever we go to get our pedicures and our manicures, we walk in and we're like, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> torchies is so Yeah, good. their queso and their corn. Yes, it's so oh. delish. And I just found we have a Freddy's 15 minutes away. So I'm going to go. Look at oh, Get some custard. There you it's go. Just like, you were just living like in a work. hole. I was. I was living in a hole. And I'm so <laughs> and excited. And your kids that you watch will love Freddy's. I, we're going to go. Okay. I'm going to take them on spring break. Yep. Take one okay. for the team. Uh, ladies, did, growing up, did you guys have any sibling rivalry? Yes. <laughs> we fought, do you like, have, civil ri- do you have a, a sibling rivalry now? No, not at all. Not at all. There was five of us. Four of us were girls. We were all two years apart, and we fought over clothes like to the death. <laughs> I remember I, I was too old. By it got physical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna, that's what I was going to say. I remember one time uh, I was too old to do this, but I got mad at my sister because she wanted in the bathroom, not Whitney, and I literally kicked her in the stomach like with my foot, like <laughs> oh flat. My gosh. Y'all are violent. <laughs> it was not a proud moment. <laughs> now, are you guys each other's favorite siblings? Oh, we don't have a favorite, I don't think. No. <laughs> I'm not sure that they would even answer that on the podcast. No, I, do. <laughs> I would say uh, we obviously spend the most time together. I would say personality wise, I'm most like my youngest sister, and oh, Ashley is saying that because she's like the sweetest one. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> Like Ash, the shows that Ashley and Kendra watch on TV, they're like, right, those are the same. I'm sorry, I'm getting a cold. My voice is getting bad. But And then my younger sister and me, we're a little bit, like, we don't watch sad stuff. And Ashley and, or scary stuff. And they're, it's, they're just different personalities. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we're nicer. I never kicked anyone in the stomach. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that you're like, he told that story. <laughs> so, so oh are, she's the sweet one. Yeah. Are all the girls the oldest, and and your brother's the youngest? Yep, poor guy. And he's a twin. Go figure, right? Oh, oh. oh. Not only was he the youngest, but he had a twin sister. So, 
There's no, there's no hope for her. And she she was the favorite of our of our. She still is. Yeah, yeah. she's still a favorite. Totally the favorite. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Do they all this... still live by you? Mm, our little sister, our baby sister, moved to Houston. Well, the Houston area. Mm-hmm. So, which sounds it's like it's five close hours it's in Texas, but it's like five hours from us. So. <laughs> I think that happened like four years ago. We've actually dr- driven to her house twice and like crashed her house and like fixed it up for her. But we 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 won't do it again unless she moves back to Dallas. We've decided. There you go. Yeah. But your back. your brother moved to Missouri, right? Yes. He's yeah. like way far away. Yes. I, think I don't we know why. Scared him away. <laughs> <laughs> Smart guy. <laughs> here's okay. Here's a question that's not part of our list. Who who looks like the daddy and who looks like the mom? Because you two look way different between each other. You know, it's funny that you say that because we'll go like to the airport. Whenever we're traveling together, people say, are y'all twins? And we're like, really? Yeah. You think we look alike? But then like people that like talk to us or like get to know us more see no similarity, you know? Yeah. So I think I look like my mom <clears throat> more. I don't know. You see that rivalry? <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, come I, here, I, I actually, I actually don't know. I don't know that it's one way or the other. Maybe it's like a, a hidden gene somewhere. I probably do look more like my dad than you because he's got like the round face. I have more of a round face. So and our nose. Oh, I have, mo- I have mom's nose. You okay, know. there you go. There. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fine, you can Sam, have that one. Sam, what is your next question? <laughs> yeah, I'll go on to the next question. Do you think any of your kids will follow in your foot? Do any of them show interest in woodworking? Mine show more of an interest in, like, the social side of it. Like, you know, YouTube, Instagram, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But none of them, I mean... I feel like they, they're used to us actually doing stuff for them. So it's kind of detrimental and actually for mine, you know. So I do think it's cool. Like we have, I have one girl and Whitney's got three girls. So I do think it's cool that they've grown up, especially our younger ones have grown up just seeing us because we were pregnant when we, when we were building and they've grown up seeing us with power tools in our hands and just building all of our furniture. So I could see one day where they just think, oh, I'll just build whatever I want. But yeah, as of right now, they don't really, like, show, like, an interest to want to come out there. It's yeah. kind of just, like, that's what we do. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Very cool. But I also think that that's very rare for kids to really show that interest. I mean, I was the same way. My grandfather, I would consider my grandfather probably a master craftsman in our trade um, before he passed away. And I'm, he would build anything. And he did it all for free, never charging anybody. You could call up and ask for whatever, and he'd build it. And he would give wow. it to you nothing. And, um you know, I had I would have had the endless supply of knowledge as a kid, um, and then after he passed away is really when I was like felt like I needed to learn it or wanted to learn it. You know, so I, I think a lot of kids growing up around that all the time just see that as a normal and don't necessarily like they're like okay I'll learn that later on or whatever. Or I kind of know how to do that um, versus ones that don't necessarily always are always around it. You know, they they see it in school or or they see it on TV and they're like, oh, hey, I want to try that. Um, You know, and then maybe they go out and build something with with their parent and just just to give it a shot. So, yeah. Yeah. They take it for granted. Totally agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do want my kids to be able like when they leave the house, I want them to be able to not only be able to do their laundry and do their dishes. I want them to be able to like know that they can use power tools if they want to. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like something that. I'll probably stress as they get a little bit older. Oh yeah. Gosh, you preface Just, that with their laundry di- and dishes. <laughs> dishes, yeah. It's, it's as important. Yeah. <laughs> the kids that I watch, there's a little boy, the oldest, who's 10, and then a nine and a six year old. And they're girls, the nine and six year old. And they love it. The six-year-old is always like, Can we go to the shop? I'm like, uh, no. I just got here. We're not going all the way back to the shop. But she loves it. So I bring my scraps and they like the father has a shop in their garage, but they like are addicted to it. Oh, so I love that. I it helps love that you're it. their teacher though, because I've always heard that you can't yes. learn from your mother. Like No, exactly. You can't, you can't learn to like sew from your mom. You have to learn it from like a grandmother or something like that. So it's yes. probably cool that they have you because yeah. you don't ever want to hear your mom tell you how to do something. How to do it. Exactly. Yeah. When my mom tells me like to do something, yeah. I'm like, uh no. Oh, yeah. And my <laughs> aunt's like, you need to do that. I'm like, okay. I just, right. I just asked my mom to teach me how to sew at Christmas yeah. and I learned. There you go. 
That was Good like probably the first time in forever. Girl, girl situation, but boys can learn from their moms. But it's the same thing. I mean, yeah. like it's it's a dad thing. Like there's very few times I call my dad and be like, "Hey, can can you help me?" I'll call my brother first. Be like, "Hey, yeah. do you know this?" Like, "Hey, can you find out from dad about this?" Like, you go ask yeah. him and then you tell me the answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. That's so funny. I know guys are so different. You don't want to ask your dad because they will tell you or like say that's stupid. Do it this way. Do it my way. That's what I've noticed. Like with my guy friends, they're like, I'm not asking my dad because uh, he's going to tell me that's a stupid idea and <laughs> you need to do it this way. So it's yeah. so funny. Okay. All right. Well, Jeremy, what's yours? What's uh, what's your favorite place to visit and why? Mm-hmm. I don't get out very often. I've got six kids, so <laughs> I, mean, I like going to Target. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't go like places really. So I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be a store. It could be. It could be a different. It could be a different town, a different state. What's your favorite favorite place? If if you were to get out or you've been somewhere, what's your favorite place? I will say for us, like both of us love Chicago. Like, well, we like to go shopping in Chicago. We've gone for work trips, but I like to go like to islands. Hmm. Be- beach life. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Me too. You kind of both agree on this? No, I'm agreeing with her. I'm like, yeah, because again, I don't get out. Like, <laughs> we, we like, we love like Chicago, I can't tell you the last though. time I went out of town. <laughs> I travel with my sister on a work trip. We love Chicago. So <laughs> that's always fun. <laughs> All right. I have another question that's not on there. Do you guys have help with your kids? At, like, or like when you guys are building and stuff? Because some of them are in school, right? It's yeah, probably so like, hard to juggle all of that. Yeah, and it's like a, it's a full time job for us now. So yeah. like a lot of people always they're like, I don't see how you have time, but you just like you would make time for a job. It's the same right. situation here. So like for me, Ashley's are older now, so she's not in as much of a predicament. I'm relearning how to do that because yeah. my next up is the age of her, or, or right around the age of her youngest, and mm-hmm. so this whole like having a website and running this with him has been a huge wake up call for me. So, um, but I have that thankfully my mother-in-law moved real close to us a couple years ago. So I have her help now, which is a very, awesome. very thankful for. So That's yeah, I could awesome. never, and like I have my mom next door. She helps me Uber the kids, you know, I mean, it, it really oh, does. Awesome. For me, it takes a village. Ashley's was, got one driver at least. And then, Oh, that's awesome. Mother, so, well, because it's hard. Your, your computer predicament this past week oh my gosh y'all like last week I'm trying to get stuff done with the baby and he goes and grabs um he's just really like he's just really bad he's a really sweet baby but he's really bad and mischievous he's not even two and he grabbed double a batteries out of one of our remotes in the living room and he went into my computer that was open my macbook pro and put it, put the AA batteries on the keyboard, and then shut it. Shut it. And then oh. stood on top of it. Oh. And oh my. sadly, because of the model, the part, like just the part to fix the screen was eight hundred dollars. <laughs> just the part, just because it's like it, it was, you know, four years old, and but there was nothing wrong with it, like literally pristine, but it's totaled. So, <laughs> all to say, I'm talking on a new computer today with you guys that I did, <laughs> and it's, but I and had it's to. cheaper to hire childcare sometimes. <laughs> yes, absolutely, 100. So that's a great example of how I'm relearning time with the, with him. You know, so. Yeah. So the moral of the story is either don't leave batteries in the remote or don't leave your laptop. <laughs> no, I, look, I know so I know what she's going through because that my son was like the perfect child and we're like oh man he was so easy let's let's have another and uh-huh. she came out and she's the only girl and she is the most mischievous one and so when Ooh. she was like two i think she, i think she just turned two um and my mom my brother my nephews were up here me and my wife were at work you know my my son and my daughter were staying home with grand with grandma and come home and i look at the ipad what happened here? And my oldest nephew comes around the corner. She was standing on it. Oh, and I, oh. I, went, I went livid. I was like, she's two years old. None of you stopped Stop her. Me. All of you sat there and watched her do it, Mom. Are you she, probably like, dared her. she was like, I didn't see it. And I'm like, 
Corbin, you're eight years old. <laughs> like you couldn't stop her from standing on the iPad. She just shattered. And so I made it up until her birthday this year. We made her still use it for two years, like just smash to pieces. <laughs> and then, and then, then we're fi- finally, okay, you're a little bit more mature. Yeah. You understand you don't step on it and throw things like we'll buy you an iPod touch. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Yeah. So funny. Well, I wanted to say you guys are awesome. That was in my question because it's amazing how you guys have so many kids and then you guys are totally badass on building and getting out projects. I, I Thanks can't, so. I can't do more than two. Shit. I don't know how y'all do it. I know. <laughs> I there's two of us. That does help. Y'all know just being able to split workloads. So, oh, yeah. you know, we've made decisions to move forward where it's easier on both of us, but it's also more productive for from a brand standpoint. So it's been it's been good. It's not. It never feels like work, except Ashley's post this week probably felt like work because it was like <laughs> eighteen plan page, but or wasn't it eighteen plan? Eighteen yeah. page plan. Yeah. So. <laughs> hmm. Well, my my second question basically got answered earlier, so I can just for, forego it anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> we can we can move ahead if you want okay. to. Um, we were going to talk about uh, what's going on in the shop, and I know you guys had sent Jeremy uh, the information, so we can we can just go ahead and ask you what is on your plate right now uh, that you guys have pending. Like, what are you working on? Well, the biggest one right now, we invested in a flip house with a business partner, so we are like in the middle of that right now. I saw the live today. That was that's a lot of stuff going on in that place. You guys are taking a lot of walls down and ceilings. It's a new and- house. It's a whole new house. Uh, we did like a twelve hundred square foot addition to an existing two thousand square foot home. So, but it's down to it's down to the guts for sure. So yeah, it's it's fun though. And our GC is our stepdad, who GC a couple of other renovations we did, and he's genius. So we just all make a really good team together, and it's a lot of fun. We like that we don't have to babysit the crews. Like that's his job. So it's kind of it's kind of the best part for you know of building for us. We get to go and do the finish out and the fun stuff. So well, that's that's cool. There is a lot going on there, and that that yeah. live was had a lot of information. I, I I like the the thing that you pointed out about the uh, headboard situation in that that upper room where you guys brought the wall out so it wouldn't limit your headboard height. That was Ashley's call. I said she's the thinker. She well, was we, smart on that one. We've learned that from experience, though, because I've done a few different things like that in my house. And now looking at some of the stuff, I'm like, well, that really boxed me in into w- the way that I can design the room with furniture. So I thought about that immediately because there was a window on the other wall. So is that wall just going to be empty space behind it? I mean, this unfortunately... I mean, because you got to build it out, you're, you're either going to have to use it or you're just going to box it in. So is it just yeah. going to be like a wasted space or what is it? Well, we turned it in like we've had spaces like that in our own houses that we've turned into like little, I guess you'd call them crawl spaces, you know, extra storage. Mm-hmm. But we both like. But you again, think that you would love having. Yeah, you would think, but you've got to have access to those. So then you've got a door on the wall that could potentially be hidden, but. I just, we are, we've given, we've thought about every other angle of storage and given so many different closet situations they never had. And we just felt like it was worth losing, you know, that 16 or whatever inches on each side by however long the room is. Just didn't make enough sense to keep it and put a door on it. So if it was a small house without a lot of storage, it would be a great alternative. Right. Um, And you could figure out something on wheels that was easy to move. But like she said, like the room was so big already the, the closets are huge. We've got tons of storage closets in the hallways. So, And they'll never know that that space was there. That's exactly. All. <laughs> yeah. all unless, lost, unless they go back and watch our videos. Unless they watch the live. That's all it is. <laughs> that we're not going to save over 24 hours. So it'll be fun. <laughs> Do so, either of you guys have design background? No, but what's funny, our grandmother who passed away... 13. Five years, five years ago, 2014. 13. Um, I can't even remember. She was a interior designer and she ran the business out of her home, which is oh, kind of what nice. we're doing now because we yeah. work at home. So that's kind of cool. Very cool. Yeah. Mm. She taught us, I stained my very first table with her. Oh, nice. I think Whitney oh, that's did too. exciting. Yeah, or she'd like come over and she'd be like, okay, that wall's empty. Let's go find a plant. Or, you know, just always. <laughs> 
you know, there wasn't, we weren't allowed to like have a spot that wasn't at least zhuzhed a little bit. So <laughs> I think she probably just, it's in our blood a little yes. bit. So nice. Yeah. nice. Well, very cool. So Sam, um, what do you got going on? Um, we are doing a hall tree, a huge hall tree for a client in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, actually. Um, so that will be fun. It is kind of like two and a half hours, three hours, but thankfully they have family in DC, which DC is only like 15 minutes, 20 minutes from us. So it'll be perfect because they're actually going to come and pick it up, which I was like, Oh, this is awesome. Okay. I'll take that job. So deliver sometimes (laughs) you deliver your pieces. I mainly do, but I have like a limit because I don't want to have to go super far. I have gone to North Carolina, but it was a family member. So that I don't mind doing, but then I'll tack on like a huge fee if you really want me to drive it like super far away. But (laughs) we're finishing that up. And then I have a couple other pieces. I'm doing some cool collaborations with Flags (laughs) of Valor, which you guys have seen. So some more stuff is coming up with that and um there was something oh i'm doing a pet show guys i'm so excited this is so fun i don't know if you guys have ever been to dc have you guys been to dc ever before no so there's a cute little town called old town alexandria it's right on the water it's like old buildings beautiful old townhouses that are like two million dollars each i have no clue how everyone affords it but it's beautiful. And there's like old little boutiques. So they have this dog's day out where you can just come and be a vendor. You have to be accepted into it. And I never do. I haven't done like craft shows or anything in a long, long time, but I'm doing it because you can bring your pet with you. <laughs> so fun. So awesome. <laughs> I I'm love so that. excited. That is for incentive too. Yeah. I'm like, uh, we're going, let's go. So we're doing all of the builds this weekend and I'm not doing a lot of builds. I'm just going to do like a pet bowl, like a couple of them and then a dog bed and then bring like tables, like small tables I've done um, and just showcase it. So I'm not going to oh, really be selling good. anything. Get your card out. That's good. Yep, my card. Oh. My dog who has an underbite that looks hilarious <laughs> and it will be great. I love that. <laughs> that's so cute. I love that. <laughs> so that's what's going on in our shop. How that's fun. funny. So well, Jeremy, what about you, man? Um, I mean, outside of traveling um, and just getting back today, I haven't had a whole lot in the shop since last weekend. I installed that massive um, barn door, which was so close to not fitting. I mean, we're talking like <laughs> 30 second of an inch. Like if it was longer by 30 second of an inch, it would not have fit. Um, Yikes. Yeah. I mean, but it, it, it fits perfect. Like I could not have asked for a better fit, like right down to the top of the carpet. I was excited. Like it was, it, and it looks good. Um, so other than that, like I'm going to start a collab build, um, tomorrow, um, that I'm going to be doing with, uh, Sam Raimondi, uh, from DIY Huntress. And I'm actually gearing up to do a, uh, kind of like a class, um, on table building. Um, I know for a fact it's going to be, it's, it's for a guy down the street. Um, his wife, um, wanted a new table and he kind of bought some of the tools, but it was like, I don't really understand. And I was like, dude, just bring the stuff down the shop. Like, I'll show you how to build it and everything. But I think we're going to have a couple other people come over and, um, kind of learn. And the, the f- actually, uh, ironic part is it is one of y'all's tables. Oh, that, that oh they picked yeah. up. Hey. it's, um, the, it, the round, the, like the 48 inch round table that with the hairpin That's legs. Just- Oh, Alicia's table. Yeah, Alicia's table. Yeah. So, um, so his wife found it and picked it out, and and so I kind of walked him through the process of like, okay, here's here's what you go get, whatever. And he and he he's one of my good friends, and he texted me yesterday, right? And I was like, hey, you know, we could do it from you know the pine from the big box store, or we can go to the hardwood store get get um, eight quarter poplar would be great. He texted me yesterday, and he goes, what do you think about Sapili? Uh, yeah. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's mahogany. It's basically yeah, mahogany. Wow. It's, it's, an exo- oh. it's an exotic wood that looks like cherry. And I was wow. like, uh, legs. There you go. <laughs> c- c- cool. Yeah. I mean, like, if it's you, cool. You want to spend it's... whatever on the top? I don't even know. 600 bucks? Like, sure. That's what I think. No right. pressure. Here right legs. right yeah. on. Let's, uh, let's do it. I'm not going to tell you no. That's right. and, I, and, and so now I'm like, 
All right, well, I'm going to teach you how to do pocket hole joinery on Sapili. On- <laughs> like, and they don't even make the like Craig doesn't even make the screws big enough. They don't even make the two and a half inch screws in in a fine fine thread. So I'm like, well, just get the inch and a half, and we'll make it work. Like you'll still learn the principles, but so that's it, awesome. So it'll be fun. We're, we'll get to do that. And I, in fact, I was telling his wife because she was asking me all about. It. I was like. I'm going to be talking to him on, on Thursday. And she was like, yeah, I was going to say, did you tell him how cool we are? How yeah. nice we are? I was like, yo, I'm going to be talking to him on Thursday. Like I was just in Atlanta with him. And she was like, just rub it in. I was like, I will. <laughs> so funny. I know a lot of my clients send me like, can you build me this? And it's all of your plans or a picture from Pinterest. And actually the first table I ever built, it was a, for a boutique owner um, down in like Falls Church is like another cute little area right outside of DC. And we put your one table that has the X and then the pieces that come in like this. Yeah. And we built that. That was my first table ever. Oh, I, built. I love it. And that it was, was my first spinning table ever too. Oh yeah. That's awesome. And it was super, it was super cute and it was in the middle of her boutique. So oh, that's, that's so awesome. That. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing that next, next weekend. I think, um, cause I told him, I was like, Hey, we'll knock it out. We'll get it all done in the weekend, which now is definitely doable because I don't have to stain anything. So, there you go. Yeah. That's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, that's, I made sure to preface that. I was like, because yeah. she was wanting to do, um, I think like the briar smoke stain or something. I was like, look, you, you, you're not going to stain Sapili. Like, you're not going <laughs> to buy and stain it. Like, yeah, it's, we're going to sand it. I'm going to spray some finish on it. How about that? <laughs> and they're like, Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I was like, thank God. Like, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's so funny. <laughs> So, Jeremy, is this the challenge that you were gearing up for that you had made mention on uh, Instagram? No, that's oh, that's not. <laughs> no, that's that. That's that thing that I was that I texting you and Sam about that I had. Ah, okay. Of the of the the, the whole shop thing. And okay. I I'll I'll tell you ladies after we get off there. I don't want to <laughs> kind of jinx it, but I got some things going on that that are uh, hopefully going to be pretty big. Awesome. And, and pretty and pretty pretty quick uh coming so cool so exciting we'll keep it on down low for now yeah i mean just because well, we, <laughs> we haven't told anybody in our family besides our moms so they should probably find out first it, and i don't want to jinx it either so yeah that's better don't jinx it yet well, again always going my to head's mall. going like this like what could it be i don't <laughs> call things out but i'm like you don't need to call things out you just need to be quiet <laughs> it's, like it's like my daughter it's like, is it this is it this? yeah is it i this? that's why i'm almost yeah. there See and then that? i had some self-control and, I'm like, <laughs> so funny. and then the rest of the show you'll be sitting there thinking quietly that's what is all- it <laughs> and not pay attention <laughs> what what did you guys just say yeah. <laughs> what was that <laughs> <laughs> so well, funny. let's see. I am working on another SketchUp tutorial for next week, um, and I just finished up a video that is going to be airing um, Friday around four o'clock Central Time. Yeah, something like that. Having to do with my my planer uh, Sheelix Cutterhead review after using it for a year, and it set me back on the projects I'm working on because it broke. So oh. oh. So it's, it's not a good to review. review. Well, it wasn't the head that broke. It was the gear drive that actually screwed into the end of it. And it, it caused um, damage to the cutter head when that happened. So I ended up having to get a brand new one. Uh, Bird Tool just sent me a brand new one saying that it, it looks like there may have been a defect in the manufacturing. We'll cover it 100%. And they sent me a brand new one. Uh, just send the old one back. I was like, okay, great. That's so, awesome. I that love that awesome. you were going to review it. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it's um, I'll, I'll go through just my thought process on ha- using it, the cost comparisons between keeping a normal cutter head, buying blades for it every month. Because when you're full time, you're changing those blades out constantly because yeah. you're nicking the crap out of them. Well, uh, you can touch on their good customer service now, too. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm sure that that. too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that was in there. Yeah, but uh, I was using it to build a, a hickory solid hickory table. Um, and a matching bench 
And then I've got an L-shaped banquette that uh, will go along with it, but that's coming after this table and bench is done. But it's, yeah, it's solid hickory. It's, wow. It's, wow. It's going to be heavy. Right. I'm hoping their floor will hold up. <laughs> yeah, because you were saying I'll that it's, it's going in like a double wide or something, right? Yeah, it's it's wow. a double wide. So there's you know Hopefully huge crawl space. <laughs> Holy Moses! Yeah. Oh my god! But every there's piece on the table, a cutout of the, the table. table floor. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our dining table. It's down there. <laughs> god. But, uh, yeah, every piece on the dining table is either um, three inch square or uh, an inch and a half thick in Whoa. several places. Wow! Wow! Um, and then the bench is all um, inch and a half down to three quarter, just depending on where what pieces there are. But um, yeah, it's going to be one heavy, heavy table. Yeah. Oh, wow. But, Speaking uh, of that, I feel like I, I will show you this wood that a client just sent me today and tell me if it's hickory because I don't really know. But I okay. want to work with hickory so bad. Speaking of that, yeah, and it's, it's, it's dense. It's real dense. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's heavy. Um. <laughs> But I did do a demonstration that an inch and a half, or not an inch and a half, but a one and a half horsepower contractor saw can cut through it without bogging down. So there's something to think about. <laughs> um, and let's see, after after that, I've got to work on several tabletops for a restaurant down in Houston. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, the Bullet Bullet Grill House is the name of it. He's He's an entrepreneur that he worked in oil and gas. Now he's opening up restaurants. So. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I got a Murphy bed build after that. So I'm kind of nice. busy. Very fun. I think that's probably our, our top request on our site. It's like, do y'all have a Murphy bed? And we've just personally never had the need for one. So we've never built one. But we get asked about it all the time. We have a great spot for it in the flip house. But there's no point if we're not going to be living there. Yeah. Build somebody. Yeah. We have to have incentive. We have to have incentive. Yeah, so. but I'm, sure, I'm sure if you built a Murphy bed... Yeah you can find somebody or somebody you know would be able to use it. Yeah, that's true. We've got, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe go with that. We'll see. <laughs> if the opportunity arises. <laughs> I've, I've built one and um, installing the hardware. I had to read the instructions a couple times here and there just to make sure I was installing it all correctly. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is kind of fun to make though. Yeah. I'm, All I'm, right. I've personally been scared of Murphy beds because you lay on it. I'm like, man, what if this thing, like I've seen too many TV yeah. shows. Like what if it just like <laughs> sucks me back up in the wall and then you can't get out? Like, I, I don't know about that. So true. <laughs> Maybe that could be our topic, Jeremy. Just talk about your fear of Murphy beds. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not that scared. I just don't know if I trust them. Maybe it's trust issues. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some cool ones that are like, they're not the kind where it looks like an entertainment wall. They're like, they fold up into like a console and the console flattens out into a bed. I thought Mm -hmm. that's really cool. That's great for like, it's two pieces of furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my multi use. Yeah. Yeah. Disney Disney had a, a cool little setup in our hotel, and this stuff was all bolted to the floor. There's no way that it was coming out of there. Um, but whenever it was all folded up, there was a table that uh, was hinged on a piano hinge that hinged on another piano hinge and it went underneath like a, you know, kind of like this. Mm-hmm. And you, all you did was just pull on the Murphy bed and that whole table just folded down underneath the bed and acted as its support. Wow. Oh, neat. It was a cool, cool setup. I should have taken video of it, but uh, wow. I, I was kind of impressed when I first figured out how to work it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's that easy. <laughs> yeah, because we walked in and we're like, uh, there's only one bed here. I think we got the wrong room. <laughs> so, and then I was like, oh, that's a Murphy. It's a Murphy bed. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Transformer yeah. furniture. Yeah. 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 So the the, the, the flip house y'all are working on, is, <laughs> is that – something that you you feel like you're going to do more of um or are those just once <laughs> we'll see if it sells <laughs> <laughs> i mean i guess that's a that's i guess that's the cheaper the, about a flip so yeah. well we've talked about it if um if this one does well and and then we'll see how you know if it does well financially as well as uh resonates to our audience which right now 
we get great response from it. So mm-hmm. we'll just see. It hasn't. It definitely hasn't been too much of a workload for us to work with that and like have it on the side with what we currently do. So it would be an easy yes if financially and everything else it works out. We do have like a 10, actually 10 episode series coming. Yeah. Up. So that's been the biggest challenge is planning because we can't really show the series till the, till the house is done Mm -hmm. so that it all comes together. Otherwise that YouTube audience, when they have to wait a month for an update, will just be gone. Mm -hmm. So we'll start airing those once the house is done. And so just planning that out, that's been a bit of a challenge. We worked on that a little bit more today. So, and all all that's going to be on your regular YouTube channel. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And Instagram available. TV and Facebook. Yeah. Hey, have y'all thought about doing um anything similar to what Ben Uate is doing? And like he he's you know, he just built that um container house out in Joshua Tree and he completely started a separate YouTube channel just dedicated to like all the episodes of that and he said you know once that's done and if he if he goes into another flip or another house build like that's where those will reside um because you know that that's you'll have a that dedicated audience that wants to see just those house related videos i think that's smart probably for he has so many followers on youtube yeah. yeah i just think um and also it's just our brand i think we've yeah. always um, just tried our, just tried to stay fully, not like not put ourselves in any kind of, you know, we don't separate anything, I guess you should mm-hmm. say, you could say. So just for, I think for him, that would work really, really well, but probably it might not work so well for us. Yeah. Plus I can't see myself managing two channels. <laughs> That's something we else. Don't even, we can't even manage what we have right now, hardly. Exactly. So. That's all I see is like more comments to answer. (laughs) (laughs) More comments to answer. Well, and then you think you're like, man, I saw that comment. Where, where is it? And you (laughs) completely forget about that. It's, it's on another channel. I get, I I see that all the time, especially when, you know, all three of us are running the podcast Instagram and we have our own. I'm like, I I see something pop up and I'm like, okay, that's on the podcast. I'm like, let me get through these comments and then I'll go over there and answer it. And then like four hours later, I'm like, Man, I don't think Squirrel. I ever answered. I don't think I ever answered yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, I, then I go looking for it, and I'm like, man, I, I don't find it. Maybe I dreamed that, and then <laughs> yeah. it totally dawns on me, like it's it resides on a different account somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and IGTV and uh, like our Facebook video platform now has really, in a way, turned into. I mean, the traffic there is kind of at times blowing YouTube out of the water. So it's in its own way, it's kind of become a whole separate channel than just like putting a Facebook post up there Mm -hmm. or IGTV, like those comments and stuff. I actually had to learn how to find them the other day (laughs) because our editor was like, hey, guys, there's like lots of comments and you need to go answer questions. And I was like, I don't even know where those are. So, (laughs) you know what I mean? There's all these social media platforms are kind of splitting themselves in a way. And so mm-hmm. I can't see doing for us, I can't see doing a, a separate, yeah. YouTube. but it's cool. And if anybody will master it, it will be Ben because he's, a yeah, genius, so. yeah, Absolutely. definitely. I know. I feel like for your brand, because it all like nicely intertwines with each other and your audience, it would be not beneficial to separate it. I just feel like it goes really well because when you're done with the flip house, you can stage it with your furniture. So So, yeah. Yeah. The episodes are going to intertwine like a build project in it too. Mm -hmm. So, cause we don't want to be strictly like just flip house and what we're doing with it. So that's what we were brainstorming this week was how we can make it like fit with what we already do. Yeah. I actually so that's, think that's our readers was... would get mad if we put it somewhere else. They'd yeah. be like, why are you doing that? I can't <laughs> find you. Now i got to check both yeah. of them. Yeah. They, <laughs> need, they need everything just very ABC. So yes. they're confused. <laughs> I, your your Instagram TV, IGTV, have have y'all got any pushback for not editing to the format, format of IGTV? Like, you, you know, you well, hear... We, you hear oh, I... You know, it needs to be vertical because people aren't going to want to flip their phones horizontal. I mean, they do it in YouTube anyway, so I don't get that. But and then, and then you get people like y'all and several others are are 
they're just throwing it up there. Like you, people are pretty intelligent. If they see a video sideways, they're going to turn their phone sideways. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've, no, we've that blows your mind, ways. man. Just yeah. Like our editor edits them both ways. Um, for a long time, we did the straight up and down. Go ahead, Ash. Well, he actually puts like on the ones that are sideways at the very beginning, he puts a graphic that mm-hmm. says turn your phone sideways. Yeah, and that, that, that's why I was yeah. asking if yeah we if haven't had any if y'all really seen pushback because that's one like I I've thought about going putting all starting to put all my past YouTube videos up on IGTV just to have another place because the audiences really are completely different. Yeah, um, you know you might get a handful of people over on YouTube that follow you on Instagram and vice versa, um, but I don't want to go back and have to re-edit them time. all either. What's that? Yeah. I said, and one day they will monetize it with the yeah. hit with the numbers that they're getting yeah. right now. It's, I think it's just a matter of time until it's monetized. Well, so. they started. I guess they're trying to get more traction on the Instagram TV. So they've started when you post it, you can choose to like have it show up in your feed, mm-hmm. which and, is important. Which yeah, is nice. we tried it one time, and our views on it like tripled just because it showed up on the feed. So. That was that was really cool. Yeah, Ooh. it is nice because I was watch, watching a couple videos and it's like you know how it says like continue watching and they've already sucked you in so it's like continue watching just yeah. click yeah and you're like okay I'm gonna click because I want to see what happens so I it's super smart that they did that yeah um and I feel like with you guys your audience and most people are smart enough to turn their phone. It's not that hard, you know? And uh, because I'm like, seriously, I was in like a group chat about this. I don't understand why people are doing that. I was like, uh, like if I saw that, I just flip my phone. It's not like I'm going like but out of my way to yeah. flip it's, my phone. It's yeah. exactly the same way on YouTube, right? Your video is horizontal, <laughs> but when you hold your phone vertical, the, the, it's still horizontal. Yeah. So you're like, oh, Wow, it's full screen, like. But dude, that's extra work for them people. I know. I was like, "Are you lazy?" Because I mean, it literally, just flip it. It's not that big of a deal. It was well, so I think funny. It, I think it comes to a problem because there are people like. I mean, we have the editor that has gone in and done special methods to be able to mm-hmm. post it without flipping your phone. And I think that there's a lot of like bigger brands that are doing the same thing. That way, they can utilize old content without shooting new stuff. <clears throat> So in a way, I think that some people feel like, you know, like people are going to prefer one way or the other. Right. And so I think that's probably where the debate comes from. To yeah. me, I flip my phone. It doesn't it's matter so interesting to me, too, that the, the audience is so different between the different platforms because we've sat on like YouTube videos for two years and thought, oh, we can't really reshare that on another platform. But then you put it on Facebook two years later and there's so many people who have never seen it before. So. Mm-hmm. So interesting to me. Yeah. Do yeah. you guys and get a lot of when I was pregnant? Okay. Like, <laughs> pregnant? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two years ago. <laughs> maybe you need a disclaimer every time you do that. That well, I've written it on one because literally, like, we've shot Ashley's bedroom tour like I think five days before I had the baby, and so I was pregnant, and I had to post that, and I was just dying on the inside, like, oh my gosh, this is. So just wait, to, but you know, comments are never a bad thing. They, they generate people coming to the video. So, yeah. And it's funny when people do that because they're like, Oh my gosh, are you pregnant again? And like you put like throwback, maybe you didn't, but I mean, no. just be like, you know, I just had a baby. Maybe think it's a like, you know, a little bit ago, but I'll be like, throwback to summer. I wish it was like warm. And they're like, Oh, it's shorts weather in Virginia. I'm like, <laughs> You Girl, idiot. You could say, I know you could say it and spell it out to them and they'd still be like the best or when we post like a piece of furniture and we're like, go get the plans. And then 75 questions. Where did you buy the, where did you buy that table? I know. Says, I built this table for $70. <laughs> where did so... you buy it? <laughs> you oh. might respond to the first two and then you're just like, whatever I'm done. <laughs> seriously the other day I did that like the same thing with the shorts happened and I was like I responded to like one person really nicely and then I was like okay I'm gonna ignore you and I was like <laughs> or I could get a little sassy and then a little yes. sassier as I continue <laughs> or I just don't post anything <laughs> <laughs> yes you start getting a little like you want to say something nice yeah depending on my like mood uh if I feel like <laughs> responding i'll respond to him just because the more comments like the more yeah. if you keep commenting you. it keeps reaching out so i'm like eh, what's it gonna hurt 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. I know I well, had somebody call me out the other day, and I and I nicely and I was like, well, I could just not say anything, but I was like, you know what? I need an extra comment. That's what I was like. <laughs> I always need an extra comment. <laughs> but then I was like, nice. But then he like apologized, and I was like, oh, all right, it's nice, good thing. I got another extra comment from saying it. So. <laughs> So fun. That's funny. I need to plug in my computer. But keep going, guys. Sometimes those comments can get get a little out of hand. My voice is fading fast and my ears are like throbbing. So I'm going to have to stop and get Tylenol in just a minute. I'm sorry. It hit like a train. You know when you know you're getting sick and then it's like the train has arrived. (laughs) It's all of a sudden. Yeah, 45 minutes ago. All day today. (laughs) Normally I'm standing on the wrong platform when the train comes. Yeah. <laughs> is there a right one? <laughs> yes, there was. The one where you don't get sick. That's the right. right one. Exactly. I took emergency this morning thinking it would solve everything. That didn't work. So, <laughs> no matter what they fine. say, no, it doesn't work. Fine. So the the house that you are doing, you said that you are working with a, a business partner. So are they are they? Um, I guess they're fronting all of the, the funds for that whole flip. Yes. So we, um, it's a, a friend of ours that we've renovated her house and she just got a crazy idea and had a lot of cash and was like, Hey, <laughs> can we do this? And she's like, a, a brilliant businesswoman, And, but also like very chill, which we appreciate. So like, I don't think we've actually, since we started demo, I don't think we've heard a word from her. Like she just trusts us. So that is the best kind of investor to have. You don't want someone that wants to do, you know, she understands that crap happens and things aren't going to get done on time because it rained for two months. So, you know, it's, it was a good opportunity, but yes, Ashley and I did have not fronted any cash. Thankfully, she's probably going to, she's probably going to call you guys one day and go, so are y'all ready to start? And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good point. Although sadly, she does see us on social media, so she knows where it's at right now. <laughs> She's but like, that house I, looks I don't think it's moving that slow, personally. No, we had a two month delay because the city didn't have like a building inspector to come and inspect it to give us building permits. So but they just didn't have one. Like <laughs> the one, the one quit, and then they were like, "Well, we have to hire a new one." So. <laughs> So meanwhile, the city okay. stops. <laughs> yeah. The city only has one. That's so wow. funny. That is like my dream. Because I went to school for interior design and my mom and I have always loved like designing stuff together. And I do clients, like interior design clients, but I don't ever show it on Instagram just because my audience isn't there. That would be for me to like separate, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um have maybe. you tried it though? But, but here's the so, thing. Is- you claim your brand to be. I know. So, but then I get nervous. So I should try. See, should you're try. yeah. You're just you, you should tease try it. it. Tease it a little bit. Like somebody told us a long time ago. Like you don't want to like cater to one audience. You want to be right. give everybody like a little bit. You know, yes. so kind of like spread it around and don't focus too much on like one area of your mm-hmm. audience. So. I'm sure there's a ton of your audience that would be interested in what you're doing design. Yeah. Well, and I might gain if you more. Put it together yeah. too. Like mm-hmm. if you're designing a house yet through that process, I mean, it's kind of how Ashley and I do it. Like we like to build the pieces because we don't want right. to go spend the money on them. But like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're able to kind of segue it with what you're already doing, I actually think your audience would have a huge, mm-hmm. I mean, it does better for us than some of our building pieces. And yeah. it's, it's the same. I mean, we started building, you know, so. Yeah. Well, you, so you can I have take a, a lot of those, that. You can take yeah. a lot of those things, Sam, and mm-hmm. your audience, you know, you may show, um, well, we're going to do this wallpaper, this fancy wallpaper, whatever. Um, well, the, your, your woodworking audience may take like, hey, that's a pretty cool shape. I like those curves. And they may incorporate that into woodworking. Like you get those ideas yeah. from it. It's just like architecture. Your you, you inspiration see, board yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So I always I, I know and well. the house hunters shows on HGTV like they always do so well because people are so nosy and they want to see like inside of people's houses. That's my mm-hmm. favorite thing to watch on like the design channel is to see the inside of people's houses. Mm-hmm. So uh, nosy. I, 
Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> With the, the like the building on my side, I feel like it's more I don't know. Like what are your ratios for male to female on your guys' well, side? Do you know that? It's like half and half. Half mm-hmm. and half. Yeah. You so know, I feel like the, Instagram more male. it's more heavy female. YouTube mm-hmm. it's half and half. Half and half. Yeah. Because I feel like I need to tap into maybe more women and then I feel like it would not that I'm not tapping into them now, but I feel like the design aspect would then ga- gain them. So I guess having different like revenues or not revenues, avenues, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. In your business. I think that you are your brand. Yeah. And I just, I think that if you have a talent that you're not showcasing or like a passion mm-hmm. that you're not like putting out there, that you're actually holding yourself back. So yeah. Okay. Instead of no worrying about baby corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and instead of worrying about people's <laughs> approval, like you should put it out there because you're proud of it. Like and there's a lot what? of stuff that, yeah, I mean, like, I don't, yeah. I just, I just think you're kind of like selling yourself short if you don't right. do it. And yeah. we also told ourselves, you know, at one point we're going to be like grandmothers. We're not going to want to be in the garage building a table. Exactly. We're going to have other skills, you know, like there's just, you know, just don't put yeah. yourself in that little bitty box because it is right. a very small box. Small you know? box. Yeah. Because I, we do so. interior design and organizing. Yeah. So I mean, like the we, thing is like, you can't be everyone's favorite sauce. Like, right. There's going to be people that don't appreciate that. And if they and leave, hate on you, you yeah. haven't lost anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, go. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So. All right. I'm yep. going to put it out that's, there. That's a lot of good info too, because I mean, in the beginning they say to niche, niche, niche until you build that audience and then you can start yeah. because you have an audience big enough now you can start branching off and then the audience that you've brought in from that niche should follow. all have other interests. I guarantee they'll all have yeah. other interests. So I don't. you're you're still going <laughs> you're, well, still, you're still gonna I don't find know. it. I also think and we we have thought this forever, like and we've done strategies as our brand and slowed posts down and other things based on content is king. And if you have good content, no matter what category it is, I mean, you can look at your stats and all that stuff all day long and your you know, audience and everything else. But if you don't put good content out there, it's not, it doesn't matter. But if you do, it also doesn't matter. It'll grow because you have great content. So I just think make your focus. If you can do a beautiful room, you, there's put no reason why you shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. worry about it. Like with Instagram now, the way that the algorithm like filters through and shows them at different times, there's no reason that you can't be like, here's one like woodworking post. And then a few hours later, here's a design post, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And Joe Schmo that follows you because you're like this excellent woodworker. He then sees that you can do a killer room and he'll be like, oh, wow. She's also got that skill. He's not yeah. going to be like. She's so oh, annoying. She went and, yeah. you know, it just doesn't work like that. She wears shorts in wintertime. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Read yeah. the comment. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to well, do it. I'm going to do it. Good girl. There, you. Guys. Well, hey, how about this? Girl power. We will all like it. And then you've got four likes or three. Yes. This girl counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get three likes off the bat. I will know that and three I bet of my followers like. like it. <laughs> don't don't forget your mother. You got to get your mother in on that too. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, we'll all course. get our moms too. And your- <laughs> <laughs> so we have funny. mom and sisters, so yeah, perfect. We, send them my way. Group. <laughs> <laughs> so before we before we sign off, ladies, because there's a lot of good information that we've all talked about. If there was one thing that you could, um, I guess, offer to anybody that is wanting to get started in a, uh, a a DIY, either doing YouTube videos or just building their own furniture. What would what would be a golden nugget that you would want to give someone? I think uh, don't expect perfection because we've learned from our mistakes for 10 years and we still make them every day. Because I think a lot of people get frustrated when they mess up on something at the beginning. And we mess up on every YouTube video. <laughs> well, multiple times. Yeah. And, and I'm with Ashley totally on that line, like trial and error. We do a whole, you know, we try everything and there's a whole lot of error and that's how we learn. So just don't be afraid to try stuff because it's so rewarding. We so. tell our hair we're sorry like 15 times every shoot. Yes. We have to stop. <laughs> yes. And we also tell people that we both started with a handsaw. Like we built a piece of furniture with a handsaw. So 
if you're scared, one, just, one time. <laughs> yeah, one time. That's all it took. But um, yeah, so just don't yep. be scared. Don't be afraid to accept the challenge. I posted right. on something on my Instagram that said, "The more you learn, the more you earn." Yeah. So there, I think yeah. that that's translates. Good. Yeah, that translates to a lot of stuff. That's yeah. good. So uh, for those of you that that don't know Whitney and Ashley, if you if you're living under a rock and this is the first time <laughs> that you guys have met these two, um, they are the Shaney the Sheet girls. And if you are wanting to get in contact with them, what would be a good way to do so, ladies? Well, we can be reached on any social channel, and our handle is at Shani to Chic. So and Whitney's number phone two. number is <laughs> yes, phone number Ashley's cell phone. <laughs> uh, but the Shani, it's S H A N T Y, the number two, because there's two of us, and Chic, C H I C, Shanty to Chic. Not in chess, Shanty is a noun, and we don't use it as a noun, so we are aware. <laughs> That's all right. Jeremy called you chick whenever I first met him. Hey, we'll answer to you. I mean, like, we get that a lot. Yeah. Thank you, two chicks. That's, yeah. That's the te- Texas education coming out. What's Texas yeah. education at that? What's this chic business? <laughs> so funny. Well, uh, Jeremy, what is a good contact for you, man? Um, you pretty much find me on my website, countrysideworkshop.com, um, or on social platforms, Countryside Workshop. Probably the quickest way to get a hold of me is through Instagram um, or email. So you can get contact form on my website to send me an email. And I stopped running Jeremy's Twitter account, y'all. So don't worry about it. I don't, even know, if that's, I don't even know if that's still active. I don't know if it is either. I mean, I, I don't. I don't even logged on and, and like. He hates Twitter. We do too. We all do. We all do. It's okay. I just didn't understand Twitter. Same. Why, why only give me 160 characters to to say what I want to say? And then all you need to tell people. Yeah, all you need to tell people is to read, which yeah, you're just eating eggs. That's all you yeah. got to do. I'm eating eggs and take a picture of it and then tweet. That's all they're, they were good for. I have never made one. Never. A Twitter? Mm-mm. You gotta make one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta. Make, and yeah. we all hate it, but you gotta make. You gotta make it just to own the name. That's, right. <laughs> that, that's what we did with Snapchat. We were like, we don't know how to do Snapchat, but we we're gonna make an account so that we have our account. But her daughter had to help us sign on the other day, so. Oh, well, so and now I can show y'all egg videos that I make if y'all want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did that with. I just don't snap to others. <laughs> did you hear the new one that everyone's like, you need to grab your name on the one that the kids watched? Have you seen that TikTok one? And they make the craziest videos. Yeah, oh my gosh. She does TikTok yeah. all day. Ashley's seen TikTok. Yeah. Uh, daughter, do your kids watch it all day? She watches it and day. she posts her own. And I, at nighttime, I sit down <laughs> and I just watch her videos that she's done because they're so funny. <laughs> but she's not allowed to have any followers unless I know them personally. So uh. she has any followers. <laughs> It's, it's like great. a kid's so version. Funny. It's like a kid's version of Instagram stories, I think. Yeah. That's what definitely. TikTok yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. music behind it. It's like music videos. He's gonna have to look at it. And there's like famous TikTokers that don't actually sing. They just lip sync to stuff, but they're famous. Yeah. Like they have like three million followers, but and they, they have funny it. stuff. It's because they have good personalities, and they think they do funny songs. Like they yeah. they it's do funny weird. things to songs. It's just weird yeah. to me. Oh, it is. They have meet and greets. For, for for it, yeah. I know it's so funny. That, uh, seriously, I've listened to like this one over and over. They just sit there and watch it, and then it says like Chipotle at the end. And so like we're walking home from school today, and I heard it like four <laughs> times. I'm like, oh my god, not again, please. <laughs> so well, Sam, what's a good contact for you, girl? Um, I am on Instagram mainly. If you want to send me a DM, I will hopefully get back to you soon. Um, because I know I get hounded on that a lot, but there's only one of me and there's a lot coming in, but also you can email me, um, Sam Ryan designs at gmail.com and our, uh, website, Sam Ryan designs.com. All right. Well, oh. I'm going to make mine fairly quick because all of my contact is on my website, which right now, unfortunately, is down for repair. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. But <Quick. laughs> if, if you do get back on the site when it gets back up, you can go to the contact section. All of my stuff is there, including email and social media stuff. I'm pretty active on Instagram. Uh, YouTube's starting to pick back up again. Um, comment there. I read them all. Try and respond to them all. Um, and if you guys are wanting to get in contact with all three of us at the same time of the podcast, 
You can email us at kickback at woodshop101podcast.com. Don't forget, we have a voicemail uh, phone number that you can call from any cell phone, landline, whatever. And it is 409-234-3959. That's 409-234-3959. Also, the Voice Memo app on your phone has great audio that you can email straight to us. And we will feature any voicemail that we get on the air and you can either give give us feedback questions what have you and the dynamic that we have on this show i'm sure we can we can give you some good answers <laughs> so yeah. um we want to thank the shanty the chic girls for being with us today it's it's been an awesome recording and they are going to be on our next episode as well so be sure and tune in next week for that uh but we we greatly appreciate you joining us it's it's been a blast lots of good information thanks for having yeah. us thanks for having awesome. us yeah so I'm sure you ladies remember the sign off that we normally do. So uh, <laughs> on the count of on the count of three, we will get that done. So uh, from Jeremy, Sam, Ashley, Whitney, and myself, we want to wish you guys well. Please be safe in your shops, and we will talk to you on the next podcast episode. So one, two, three, boom! boom. boom.